Well, you know, it, it was it was eerie for all of us. I think for my whole family. Mm -hmm. Steve, I I, I, f I always felt compelled to say was such a great, genuine guy. He was. You know, we've been working together for about two weeks at the time, and he was one of the guys that 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 did everything on the crew. I mean, he mm -hmm. was not a prima donna at all. He'd been doing this for 15 years, was world famous, but he was just totally committed to these animals. He had a great sixth sense about reading animals. And this, what happened with Stingrays, was a total fluke accident. It had nothing to do with him. I've seen people swim closer to Stingrays in my life. There have been cover of dive magazines with people swimming above people Stingrays. People like to ride on them. Some people, right? manta rays more. Stingrays usually yeah. won't let you get that close. Okay. I mean, that's the thing. You, you can kind of swim above them, but they, they kind of flutter out before you can mm -hmm. really touch them. And it was a freak accident. Uh, when the stingray darted to the side, and it's long, it was a big bullnose stingray, probably about as big as like this. Yeah. And um, long six foot tail that darted to the side with the barb, and it just, as the, the tail kind of brushed underneath him, the barb just caught on his shirt, and it, I mean, one in a billion, just found its way into his shirt. Do you mean if he hadn't off. been wearing a shirt, that might not have happened? Um, I mean, because it the, might have glanced off a wetsuit but differently. But I mean, the stingray wasn't actually attacking him. It was just no, the trigger mechanism by it. The stingrays can attack. They have I a see. tail that they don't really control. It can move a little bit, and the barb that they can lift up amazing? and down. So the so but, it was uh, just it was a freak accident. So it, it, was it was not his the, fault. He wasn't molesting the stingray. He wasn't touching. As I've heard so many times, he wasn't inviting. But still, that it was an involuntary like act on the part of the stingray. Yeah, I mean, it, it would could because makes it even the weird. barb is a defense against a de mm -hmm. again a defense mechanism for people stepping on or, or creatures biting you know things like that. So, um, but I was on the ship. And but nobody knew what had happened. No one was sure. We actually, uh, from what I understand, he got to the, he made it to the surface and pulled the barb out. So a lot of people say if he hadn't done that, he would survive this buckus. I mean, if you get a, like a, basically a stiletto in your heart, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. um, so he got to the, so he pulled it out and then went unconscious on the small boat. They were, they were snorkeling. I was kind of reading. We were they were like on a dinghy? Afternoon. They were in a little, yeah, a little inflatable yeah. dinghy, just a couple hundred yards out the back of the boat. And mm -hmm. we got a mayday on the phone. It said, mayday, mayday, Steve's been hit. And they came to the back of the boat. And he was unconscious. And we proceeded to do CPR for about an hour and a half while we got him to the nearest island where the paramedics had come in a helicopter. And when they got there, they were able to do more diagnosis than we could do, because mm -hmm. uh, we thought he, he, just, he was he alive just, all that time. No, he was unconscious and he, he stopped a, breathing, and he lost, lost but, his pulse. But so. that, but that was we were keeping him alive. But. Okay, because uh, he really didn't have a chance. I guess. No, and when the paramedics got there, that's what they said. They said, um, it, "There's it was, nothing you can do." Right, right, there's right, right. So um, it was eerie because it was it was it was a it was an icon just like my father was, and he. He died in an accident on expedition, right. leaving two children, right. a son and a daughter, and a, and a widow, um, which is exactly what happened to my family. Right. And uh, so it was. It, that was kind of eerie, difficult. I think for all three of us, about about because how, once you get over the initial shock, then there's the realization that you've sort of walked this way before. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, it was. It, that yeah. was. That was difficult. But do you have an ongoing relationship with his family? You know, I, I haven't seen them since, actually. They, you know, based out of Australia. Um, mm -hmm. They've been to D.C. once or twice, and I'm usually gone. What do you but, think of uh, Bindi's career? Do you think that's a good idea? You know, I don't know. I think, I, I, I know Terry loves her children very much, mm -hmm. and I think that, um, uh, I don't think she would let anything bad happen to them. I think it's an opportunity for Bindi to connect with her father, and she's very talented. She's uh, um, enthusiastic and loves what she's mm -hmm. doing, and I'm sure that Terry will, uh, will make sure that it's something that doesn't, uh, overwhelm and take over Bindi's life that she doesn't, you know, wake up a few years later in the in the public eye uh, and go. You know, this because be coming idea. from your background, you probably see what he was doing much as within your own family, like a family industry. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, they have a long way ahead of them. You know, I know my sister and I never mm -hmm. felt pressured to be in this, and I doubt I don't think Terry or or John or, or their their grandfather would would pressure Bindi or Bob, his son, mm -hmm. who's uh, who's very least like two now, I think into this. So, I mean, there are similarities, but I, I, I hope that they won't be feel too pressured to, to follow what they, if they, if they don't want to. Right. But if they do, they'll be supportive. So. It's interesting that you say you didn't feel pressure to do this because um, you went to Scotland and studied history. What, 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 what happened? <laughs> what, what were you going to do with history, and then how did you end up coming back to the family well, business? Good There's not much to do with history other than be a teacher, uh, but I always loved history, and I always loved story. Mm -hmm. And just like my grandfather, I never wanted to be a, a scientist. I was never very good at it, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and always loved kind of that side, I think that side of the brain, English history, those things. Mm -hmm. And history was, gave me an opportunity to study a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, history of economics, understand economics, mm -hmm. politics, environment, uh, people, whatever. So it, it, it was able 
to ground me, I think, and understand a lot of different things that would hold, it would do me well in, in my future, I knew, right. in, in being a communicator, um, so that you could know about a lot of different things. I think that's important if you're going to communicate. But were you still, do, were you concurrent with that? Were you doing expeditions? Um, some, somewhat. I tried mm -hmm. to kind of focus on university, though we started uh, Philippe Cousteau Foundation, which is now Earth Echo International. It's kind of halfway through university, so I was involved with that a little mm -hmm. bit. How can people who want to do what you do, do what you do? God, you know, half the time, I don't even know what I do. Well, um, maybe that's the secret. <laughs> Just dive in, right? Yeah, you know. Well, you were, for example, you were writing on your website about this shark station in Bimini. Mm -hmm. And you said in your blog that people could just volunteer to go to it. Is that is that literally true? Absolutely. There are a lot of opportunities, you know, for people that, and I think, um, you know, it depends because we do so many different things. I also consult for, you know, projects and companies, resource development mm -hmm. on greening and experiences. Right. And, do the films, I do the documentaries as part of my life, then I do the nonprofit stuff, we work with concerts and we work with, you know, education programs and so I do a lot of different things. But for any one of those, I think, you know, certainly it has to be something that you're passionate about. It's important to network as much as possible. Yeah. Certainly we, you know, always had a had a great platform and, and an awesome opportunity, um, despite some some people trying to thwart that. <laughs> and um, one person. But I think that, you know, we Doors open, but they're a lot faster to close in our case, too, yeah. if you don't perform. So, it, the, you know, it's a double-edged sword. I think it's just networking and following your passion and, and looking for opportunities out there mm -hmm. that, that allow you to, to, to pursue that. Do you believe in aquariums? Um, yeah, I don't really have as... It depends on the aquarium, I think, first, is, is a big important caveat. Do, am I a fan of uh, mammals in captivity? No. Do I mind um, in some aquacultured coral or aquacultured... Uh, um, uh, clownfish in captivity? No. I think uh, they can be a great opportunity for education, but uh, I think, you know, I, I'm not a big proponent of, of the mammal thing. I think that uh, those that are already in captivity, they're, they're not going anywhere, so we should care for them as much as yeah. we can. But I know some places people still take mammals out of captivity, and you're all of a sudden taking dolphins typically. You're taking an animal who swims hundreds of miles a day, sees with sound, Dives hundreds of feet mm -hmm. and lives in close family units now his entire life. To jump for an and audience. Put it into a cement block where it swims three lengths its body length and its world ends. Mm -hmm. And the sound issue is no, you know, they, no longer an issue. And I've heard of stories. I know people that have done this and have converted. You know, they take the babies and the mother follows the boat all the way back to port, clicking and screaming, you know, out of the, uh, out of the water. That's not nice. And oftentimes there there are several candidates that die right. um, through the capture process. So it's. You know, I think if uh, uh, they always look like they have a smile on their face, but it's not necessarily well. That's the us case. telling ourselves what that's we want to hear. That's us kind of thinking. You know, this is cuddly happy. And dolphin. sharks, I would imagine, it's the same thing that they can't, they they have no reason in captivity. Well, sharks, um, in some cases, smaller sharks. I mean, there are so few sharks. We kill so many. They have a lot more to fear from us than we do from them. Yes. And we kill up to 100 million sharks a year. So, and I'd is that much just the fishing industry? Shark. Um, Mostly the and fishing big industry, gillnets, mostly yeah. for shark shark fin soup. A lot mm -hmm. of it now is well, that, yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of it in bycatch mm -hmm. as well. I think um, sharks in captivity is a diff is is an issue as well that 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 I shy away from. Mm -hmm. um, but in some cases, if it's an injured, I know we've rescued rehabilitated dolphins that were unreleasable, so it was either euthanize them or keep. It I'd rather keep them alive and mm -hmm. you know provide a good facility and habitat, not a little square box, but something for them to to live in. Um, uh, you know, and so there are, there are exceptions to the rule, but in general, kind of the big big animals are yeah. not a big fan of keeping in captivity for our pleasure. So virtually having fins yourself when you're at home, do you like take a bath or a shower? Do you need to like get in the water every day? <laughs> I, you know, I spend, I'm a, a shower man. you have a pool in your backyard I'm a shower you just man. Go. No, I live in an apartment. Uh, I'm a shower man. I, uh, how, how many days can you go without being submerged in water before you? You know, I do, you know, I come back from expedition almost waterlogged. So, uh, you know, we spend so much time in the water. So, so I, I, it usually ties me over for a little while. I, I can live on the odd shower. I'm, okay. I'm pretty good with that. Well, it's been great to have you here. We wish you a lot of luck. When will this air? When will your project for Discovery um, air? When is it looking for? The, it's not scheduled yet? No, the, um, the, the series will come out in the U.K. in the fall. Okay. Then And BBC Worldwide uh, in the fall. Okay. And then it will be... In the United States, probably not until the new year because they re-edit it. The UK, you know, BBC Two has no. Okay, well, we'll just keep looking. So they have to re-edit it so for keep, the American audience. So, so go to Earth Echo, go to your website, and read your blog, yeah. and people can travel with you even virtually. We hope so. So yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Thank you very that much. That was very fun. Thank, Thank you. you everyone.